But let me give an example of how this works. So let's suppose we have some patient condition come in the hospital, $5,000, um, and 20% of the time they get readmitted. And it costs another $5,000 whenever they do. So on average, the payer, Medicare, health plan, or whatever, is paying for these patients $6,000. $5,000 for the initial stay, 20% of the time, another $5,000. Now, if you were this hospital or provider or health system and you wanted to say, I'm going to offer a warranty now, I'm not going to charge for readmissions for these particular procedure, how much would you charge? Well, the answer is you'd charge $6,000. Because if you charge $6,000 and you don't charge any more for the readmissions, you're basically making the same amount of money that you were making before. But why would you do this? Well, the answer is because all the incentives have changed. Because now, if I can actually get the readmission rate down, my costs are going to go down, but my revenue is not going to go down. So I'm actually making more money now by being able to reduce the readmission rate. Um, and we want to save a little bit of money in healthcare, right? So this provider could say, I'll actually now offer this procedure at a lower price. And maybe the health plans will send me more patients because I'm now the higher quality, lower readmission rate, lower cost provider. And the incentives continue. So everything I can do to drive down readmission rate now actually benefits the bottom line rather than hurting me the way it does today. And so if I can get readmission rates down, the quality is better, better for the patients. The cost is lower, the payers are paying less, and the health system is actually better off financially. Win, win, win. But you can only do that by having that driven by the provider. In contrast, simply saying, back to my earlier example, simply saying I'm not going to pay you for readmissions immediately sends the provider into a loss situation because you haven't actually changed the amount they're paying for the base case. You're simply saying we're not going to pay you for the readmissions. And only whenever they can actually eliminate all readmissions do they get back to where they started. Not a very desirable scenario. Better to have the financial incentives and the quality incentives aligned. Um, you've also got to capture, though, the cost of new programs. So if I put this in place, same scenario that I had, if it costs me, though, more to try to keep the readmissions down, then if I don't get the readmissions far enough down, I may end up losing money. So I've got to figure out a way to either have the readmission rate come low enough that the investment that I made in reducing readmissions pays off and I actually make more money, or I've got to figure out how to do that readmission reduction intervention more cheaply so that the cost of that is offset by what I'm saving in terms of the reduced readmissions. And then I can go to the payer and say, I'm going to actually give you this care at a lower cost because I've figured out how to do it at a low enough cost and achieve a good enough result. But I think that's going to be the challenge for people who are running these programs is how can we do them efficiently and how can we get a big enough impact to be able to get the return on that investment. But that approach is better because the provider has an incentive now to reduce the readmission, a financial incentive as well as a quality incentive. And they also have an incentive to find the lowest cost way to do it rather than just pay for the standardized program that somebody has. But to make it work, you've got to have shared and trusted data. So the hospital, the health system, the provider has to know what their current date, data are, how many readmissions they're having, how many they think are preventable to be able to put those together. And the health plan also needs to have that same information. They have to match because otherwise people come to the table arguing over the data rather than saying how can we actually find a win-win in the middle where the health plan, the payer can save money and the provider can actually make more money making the patients better off. Now, one barrier you run into this is, particularly in the setting we've been talking about, is who actually gives the warranty? So does the hospital give a warranty, then home health give a warranty, and the PCP give a warranty, and the rehab facility give a warranty? They all give them warranties, and they're all trying to take credit for that. Um, that's kind of challenging when you've got this many different entities involved. Um, so that's where the notion of a comprehensive payment uh, comes into place. Um, Oops, I used the wrong slide here. Comprehensive payment to a provider uh, for being able uh, to do that. So the idea is there is one payment to somebody to be able to manage all of this and then let them redesign care within that without worrying about what they're going to lose. Now, why am I telling you all this? Well, because, in fact, Medicare has a series of bundling initiatives out right now that they are looking for people to apply for. 
Um, the narrowest one is an inpatient gain sharing model, which may have some advantages, but doesn't necessarily fo focus on this. But the second model that they have been talking about is called a, is a virtual episode bundle with a warranty. Basically says, we'll define a budget for the hospital care, the physicians, post-acute care, and any readmissions, pay you a single price, you give us a discount up front, and then if you can figure out how to reduce it, reduce it enough to save more money, you keep, you keep the balance. Um, so you get a bonus. If you beat the budget, you pay some back if you don't. Um, they also have a model which doesn't actually even start with the hospital. It starts with post-acute care says, if we put together a post-acute care, a nursing home, a home health, and physicians, and cost of readmissions, give you a single budget. If you beat the budget, you get a bonus. Uh, and then there's a fourth model, which again is an inpatient bundle, just hospitals and physicians. But these two payment models are now available as demonstration projects to do this under Medicare if the community organizes itself to do that. Big jump, but big opportunity, uh, too. Now, the fact that Medicare is doing that is probably not enough. Because if you're really trying to do this across all of your patients, you have to think about, so uh, what are the other payers doing? And we really want to be able to get all the payers aligned. And that's, again, why it's very important in the community to have a mechanism to be able to bring all of the payers together um, through a mechanism like QCorp to be able uh, to talk about that. Where would you start on this? Um, you might want to do Medicare bundling, but I think, and frankly, one of the best places to start is we've got this huge disconnect right now between two payment reform silos. We're paying medical home projects around the country to be able to do stuff, and then we're penalizing hospitals for readmissions. Why not get them to be able to work together jointly so that the medical homes focus on reducing hospital readmissions to generate the money to be able to support the medical homes? Very logical thing to be able to do in the community. I've been talking about payment. The other side is what about the patient? Because the payment system is all about how the provider gets the ability and the incentives to improve the patient's care, to do things, to coordinate better, et cetera. But it takes two to tango in healthcare. You've got to get the patient engaged with this too. And one of the common things I hear from physicians is the argument that, um, you know, what about my non-adherent patients? Well, truthfully, what I've seen is that a lot of those non-adherent patients are non-adherent because they can't adhere, because we do, do things like have a complete disconnect today between pharmacy benefits and medical benefits. So if you're trying to keep those COPD patients out of the hospital, and the thing that they need to do is to take their inhalers, and they've got three different inhalers, all of which have a $25 copay a month or they end up in the Medicare donut hole where they're not being paid at all for those inhalers. And those inhalers are typically $200 a month individually wholesale. Is it any surprise that the patients don't use their medications? And what's the doctor, nursing home, hospital supposed to do about that? So in summary, I think what you should be thinking about trying to do is to have a comprehensive and data-driven approach to reducing readmissions in Oregon which to me starts with analyzing the data to try to figure out where your biggest problems are, which conditions, which patients, which areas, which facilities. Second, then to look at what are the root causes of those readmissions, and there may be many of them, and figuring out how to redesign care in the settings where those root causes are occurring to be able to prevent those readmissions. Transitional interventions, will be very desirable to fix the problems that are genuinely transitional. But you shouldn't be using transitional interventions to paper over more fundamental problems. And you shouldn't have the patients have to get hospitalized to be able to get better, better care. Third is create a business case to actually look at the numbers and say, is what we are spending on this going to be able to achieve enough of a result? And if not, how do we either cut the cost or improve the, the effectiveness of it? Um, and you've got to coordinate to do that. If everybody tries to do stuff independently, it's not going to be efficient. And then you've got to monitor your performance and continuously adjust. Just because it is proven in the literature does not mean that if you do it in your setting with your patients, it's going to automatically work without you actually focusing on understanding that and how to adjust it. And I would end by saying, go back and always ask the patients. It's not based on whether you think it's working. The question is whether it's working from the patient's perspective. Um, uh, all this stuff, and I actually put the presentation, it's up on the web now. Um, there's some information about hospital readmissions on uh, the CHQPR website, uh, including the presentation today. If anybody is desperate to download it in the next 
half an hour, or if you want to throw tomatoes at me, uh, you can. And with that, I will stop and uh, see if anybody has any questions, uh, challenges, or disagreements.